Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to New Stos. And one thing that I just cannot stand is a revisionist history where somebody takes something that happened in the past and completely twists those turn of events to fit their own narrative and their own motive. Unfortunately, in today's world, though, with social media and the internet where anybody can just make up anything, it happens far, far too often. And that's kind of what's happening today with the Microsoft Bethesda acquisition and its Xbox exclusivity. Yeah, we haven't exactly talked about this topic in a while. We probably shouldn't have to today, to be honest with you all, because it was answered a long, long time ago. But since the community and some outlets are running with this story, acting as if it's something that we didn't already know, well, I'm going to give you all an update and a refresher on this situation today. Also, we did get a potential update for a PlayStation 5 exclusive as a leak made its way online in a somewhat surprising way. With that said, though, we do have other things to talk about as well. Keep those timestamps in mind if you want to skip around. But without further ado, let's just go and jump right into things. Starting off with breaking news because Counter-Strike 2 just got confirmed. Now, if you've watched the channel regularly, this might not come as a huge surprise since I covered its leak about a week or so back. But now it is official. Valve themselves confirmed Counter-Strike 2 today and... Better yet, you won't have to wait too long to play it yourself because it's slated for a summer release. So there you go. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this right now. Counter-Strike 2 is about ready to break all records on Steam. This is one of the biggest and most successful competitive games to date, without a doubt. And with what they're calling the largest technical leap in Counter-Strike history... Yeah, there, there's going to be a lot of renewed interest in this specific title. Both new and old players alike are going to jump into this sequel. That is kind of the thing here, though. Counter-Strike 2 will be a free upgrade. This is not a sequel in the sense that it's a brand new game that's changing absolutely everything. But rather, instead, it's a massive upgrade with improvements to its visuals, its network, it's got new features, and different things like that. As an example, not only are they moving maps to Source 2 Engine with an improved lighting system, but they're also changing how smoke grenades work. Thanks to Source 2's lighting system, you'll be able to see lighting effects within the smoke itself, and you'll also be able to move the smoke around around with bullets and grenades. That's actually a really cool feature that'll add a whole new strategical dynamic to Counter-Strike. They've also announced Counter-Strike 2 will come with a new tick rate system that will better register what you're actually doing in the game. This means that when you shoot, when you move, when you throw grenades, or whatever you're doing is exactly when a server will register it. They are putting an emphasis on improved servers and are putting any type of input lag in the rear view mirror. Either which way, though, I mean, this is huge news. Again, Counter-Strike is a massive, massive franchise. And if you are a CSGO player, a limited playtest is going out today for select players. So, hey, if you're lucky, who knows, you might be able to play it as early as well now. Other than that, though, Valve will continue to reveal more information and more features as we draw closer to its release, which, again, is this summer. Now, we also got another exciting announcement today, or kind of because it actually appears this was by accident basically how all this started was that a lego racing game leaked out earlier this week so 2k then decided to get ahead of that leak by confirming yes it, it does indeed exist and that they plan to fully unveil it on march 23rd well apparently ign just did not get that memo because they dropped a full article today which revealed that it's an open world AAA racing game priced at 70 dollars titled lego 2k drive it actually kind of sounds like Legos meets Forza Horizon, which, I mean, that that's good in my opinion. And yes, being a Lego game, you can fully customize your own car. The screenshots that they posted actually looks really good. It looks and sounds like it could be a lot of fun. However, IGN did since take that article down, which makes it a little bit more evident that they posted this article by mistake and, and that it wasn't just some exclusive announcement only for them. Unfortunately for them, though, news traveled fast and its screenshots are all over the internet by this point. If you want to check them out yourself, I will drop a link in the description below, but otherwise, I'd, I'd really just go and say stay tuned for tomorrow when they fully reveal LEGO 2K Drive themselves, which more than likely will include gameplay because it is set for a May 19th release. If anything, the pictures that they showed today, this announcement might be worth tuning in for. Let's just go and get into this Bethesda situation, though, and uh, th this is honestly kind of a frustrating topic to go over just because <laughs> this really shouldn't be as big of a story as it 
currently is. Unfortunately, though, this has been just absolutely blowing up online. Different outlets in the community are running with this topic right now. So I feel like it's needed to just go over the facts rather than this revisionist history that some are putting out there. Sadly, this kind of detracts from another topic that I wanted to talk about today. Maybe I'll reapproach that tomorrow. But what's happening here is that somebody at Arcane, the studio behind Deathloop and Redfall, Bethesda Studio, confirmed that they did originally have plans for a PlayStation version of Redfall. He then said this, We were acquired by Microsoft and it was a change with a capital C. They came in and said, No PlayStation 5, we're focusing on Xbox, PC, and Game Pass. It's not very serious, it's even a good decision, I think. It helps to support Game Pass and have one less platform to worry about, one less complexity. Now, even though he kind of ran this statement back by clarifying that it was a good thing to make Redfall an Xbox exclusive, I'm actually baffled that he would state this publicly because it serves no purpose for either Arcane or Microsoft. And in fact, I, I think that it even detracts from their very own game right now as Redfall, is being covered today. So instead of talking about Redfall, we get to talk about this as outlets run with this quote amidst the Activision Blizzard acquisition because people are trying to treat them the same. The Microsoft is somehow being misleading. And then some fans are acting like this is just astonishing news. It, it, it's a complete surprise that came out of nowhere when it, it really isn't. See, I, I covered the Bethesda acquisition for a long time. If you're a long time follower, first off, thank you. But you'll remember those days. But how the Bethesda acquisition played out was that Microsoft wouldn't publicly talk about exclusivity until the acquisition was complete. During that phase of the acquisition, they said that they weren't allowed to talk about exclusivity until the acquisition was complete. Rather, they kind of spoke between the lines by alluding to the idea that they would continue to support games that are already available on PlayStation, aka Fallout 76 and Elder Scrolls Online. But other than that, it would be a case-by-case -case basis. I mean, this was a huge debate back then, but it seemed pretty evident for a large part of the community what was happening here. But once the acquisition was complete, though, Phil Spencer on day number one confirmed without a shadow of doubt what we kind of already suspected, and he laid it out crystal clear. In fact, instead of hearing me quote him, let's just go and listen to his exact statement here. Now, we know you all have a lot of questions. We've gotten a lot of questions since we announced this deal. But one of the one of the biggest ones, Phil, is this question about exclusivity and how you think about that and how that's going to work with, with Bethesda. Yeah, I see it. I see it in the community. I, I listen to the podcast and all the questions. <laughs> so I'm going to try to be as clear as I can because uh, I, I, that's what I, I, I just think it's fair. So obviously I can't sit here and say every Bethesda game is exclusive because we know that's not true. There's contractual obligations that we're going to see through, as we always do in every one of these instances. We have games that exist on other platforms, and we're going to go support those games um, on the platforms they're on. There's communities of players. We love those communities, and we'll continue to invest in them. And even in the future, there might be things that have either contractual things or legacy on different platforms that we'll go do. But if we're an Xbox customer, the thing I want you to know is this is about delivering great exclusive games for you that ship on platforms where Game Pass exists. And that's our goal, that's why we're doing this, that's the root of this partnership that we're building, uh, and the creative capability we will be able to bring to market for our Xbox customers is gonna be the best it's ever been for Xbox after we're done here. So, I mean, there you go. This is not anything new that we didn't already know about. Really, I wouldn't even be shocked if Starfield also was originally planned for PlayStation. But that's the thing here. Outside of contractual obligations and ongoing games like Elder Scrolls Online, all other games that are not confirmed for PlayStation will likely be exclusive for Xbox. And we've known this since day one, and we suspected it even before that. And well, they're completely just in doing that. They never made any commitments otherwise, and they own these franchises now because they paid billions of dollars to do that. Just as when PlayStation acquires studios, they're in the right to make those games exclusive as well. None of this should be shocking. The reason I think that this story is kind of exploding the way it is, though, is because... Some people were trying to draw comparisons to the Activision Blizzard case and the ongoing dispute with regulators. But again, I have covered both of these buyouts quite extensively, and the wording for both buyouts are 
drastically different. In the Bethesda situation, Microsoft never committed to multi-platform unannounced games, and a lot of the quotes that goes around, they were referring to games that are already available on PlayStation. Again, Elder Scrolls Online, Fallout 76, etc., etc. They are not going to take those games away. They hinted at exclusivity prior to being complete, and then absolutely confirmed it was about exclusives when the buyout was complete, as we just heard a moment ago. Again, they never made commitments with regulators otherwise, which the EU themselves recently confirmed. In Activision's case, though, the wording has been quite different. Microsoft is being crystal clear <laughs> that Call of Duty will remain multi-platform with current and future titles, just as they do with Minecraft. Now, as for other Activision Blizzard franchises, which has sorely had very little focus on them at all, that is more of a reasonable question here. Those are more of a mystery, but at the same time, it, it just doesn't seem like Sony nor regulators are concerned about franchises like Crash Bandicoot, like Spyro, and Diablo. Instead, they've primarily focused on Call of Duty considering its massive popularity. So if the Activision Blizzard acquisition theoretically goes through, yes, it is possible games like Crash Bandicoot 5 might be exclusive to Xbox in the future. That kind of remains to be seen here and is a very real possibility unless more concessions are made with regulators. But as for Call of Duty, this is not a debate anymore. It will be multi-platform. Either which way, though, I mean, none of this news should be shocking in the slightest, and that's the big thing here for me. We've known since day one of the Bethesda buyout, it is about Xbox exclusivity. So the fact that this story is being made out to be such a big topic two years after the announcement was originally made is a little surprising, to say the least. Now, speaking of PlayStation exclusivity just a moment ago, well, actually, their biggest game of the year being Spider-Man 2 was hit by a rather interesting leak. Everybody kind of wants to know when this game will release, and well, according to Tony Todd, the voice actor for Venom, this is what he told a fan on Twitter. Looks like September. Massive publicity coming in August. Commercials start dropping in August, so I'm told. Hold on to your... and hold your breath. Gonna be... necessary. So, yeah, he probably wasn't supposed to say this, and he has since removed those tweets, but, as we all kind of know, it, it, it's hard to hide things on the internet. If you said it, it's out there. For that matter, this is not the first time a voice actor has leaked something game-related. Last year, Norman Reedus, the protagonist in Death Stranding, leaked its sequel months ahead of its official announcement. I think that game companies might want to maybe tighten up with their protocols going forward, but this leak is really interesting for two different reasons. One is that it appears we can better our expectations as to when we'll see more of Spider-Man 2. It does look like August is going to be a big month for promotional material, but more so is that if this game truly is slated for September, I mean, this will be an extremely competitive month between Xbox and PlayStation because Starfield, Xbox's biggest release of the year, is also slated for September. Yeah, talk about the Battle of the Titans here. That's exactly what you'll get in September if all of this does come to fruition. With that said, though, do keep in mind that none of this is necessarily confirmation. The voice actor said it looks like it will release September, but he didn't say that it absolutely would release that month, which means that he might not necessarily be 100% sure himself. It sounds like he's more assuming that, considering all the promotional material is slated around that time frame. I mean, to be fair, that does make sense. He he is probably correct here, but all I'm trying to say is nothing is necessarily confirmed as of this moment. Do still kind of take this as a rumor for the time being. One way or the other though, it does look like September is a good possibility, and I mean, I am ready to see a full-blown reveal for Spider-Man 2 as that first game was absolutely mwah. Let's go and take a look at the poll of the day though. We're asked you all, do you think Activision should have made Crash Team Rumble free to play instead of $30. And as you can see here, the wide majority of you all being 70% did say yes, while only 19% of you said no. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I said this just yesterday, but I was a little surprised that they priced this at $30. Well, on one side, I do think that this looks like an interesting and fun game, but knowing that it's a live service game that not necessarily everybody seems sold on, I feel like that it would have been better served 
as a free-to-play title. That way, more people would try it out and maybe jump into it. I just feel like because it's a completely unique game, it's completely different than anything that we've seen before, it's not an easy game to sell, per se. Hopefully, I'm wrong, though, because, again, I do think that it looks interesting. I hope it turns out to be a lot of fun. I'll probably buy it myself, but I do wonder about its long-term success under that $30 price tag. For that matter, I wouldn't be shocked if this game eventually goes to free-to-play if it doesn't have the success that they are hoping for. It does seem like most of you all are in agreement here, though, that many of you do believe that this game would be better served as a free-to-play title. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.